What's going on everyone? It's King Tuts Pro. Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's video, you're going to like today's video just because I'm going to show you seven easy tips to speed up your workflow and just how to make Final Cut Pro 10 run faster when you're editing, whether you're editing for music videos, for vlogs, for travel videos, or for anything really, then this video is for you. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. All right, so my first tip is going to be, well, which MacBook do you use or Mac do you use? So I'm actually using uh, the 2016 MacBook Pro because I get asked that question a lot. And that is going to be the 15 inch 2016 MacBook Pro touch bar and it is running on macOS Catalina, so software does make a big difference. So if you're running on an older version than Catalina, like Mojave, High Sierra, or Sierra, then Final Cut Pro 10 might struggle a little bit more just because with the newer updates that Apple puts out, they fix a lot of bugs and fixes. Another thing, kind of like a side note, you know, having more storage. So right now I'm using uh, or have two terabytes of flash storage or SSD on the MacBook Pro, no external SSD or anything like that. So this does make Final Cut Pro 10 run faster because it uses more storage and it has more storage available to use. So if you're, you know, if you're running really low on storage, that could also be another reason why Final Cut Pro 10 is running slow. So I just suggest you guys either delete some files or move them onto an external drive just to clear up some of that space so Final Cut Pro 10 can use that. Alrighty, so the second tip is going to be how you create your project. So we're gonna go into new project at the bottom and we're gonna name this project 4K for the time being. Uh, we're, gonna we're gonna name this 4K project, I guess. We're gonna save this in this event here and starting time code, that's totally fine. We want that at zero. Video here is important. So we're gonna set this to 4K because that's what we want. We're gonna be editing in 4K. So this has to match your clip. And if you don't know, you can just do use automatic settings. But the problem with using automatic settings is that it will Final Cut Pro 10 will just choose it for you. And that can also slow down Final Cut Pro 10 because you don't you don't really know what you're you know you're using. So I suggest you guys keep it to 4K or 1080p if you if you have 1080p footage, select 1080p and set the frame rate to what you filmed in. If you're editing in 24 or you filmed in 24 frames, select 24. If you filmed in 30 frames, select 30 or 60 if you filmed in 60 FPS. That's fine, I'm gonna click on OK. All right, so the third tip is going to be uh, actually importing your clips. So we're gonna go into File, we're gonna go into Import, and we're gonna do Media, or you can press Command-I. And I'm going to select, I think it's five 4K ProRes footage uh, video clips. In this case, each size is roughly one gigabyte, which is pretty big for a ProRes clip, but of course it has to hold all that data. But we have the ability to actually make that smaller so that we don't have to use that full entire, you know, one gigabyte file size for that one single clip. To do that, you're gonna do is select all of them if you want to apply the settings to all of your clips or just to one clip. I'm gonna do all of them, so I'm gonna select all of them, and I'm gonna go here to the right here, and we're gonna go to add to existing event. Yes, I want that one to this one here, which is where my project is saved at, or you can create a new event, but I'm just gonna save that there. Files, this is also important here. If you don't have that, just click show. We want to, you can do copy to library. Again, if you're running low on storage, don't do this because this will can, this can actually make Final Cut Pro 10 one slower. So I'm gonna do leave files in place because I'm not gonna be moving them any, anywhere. Also, this is where people get uh, that red like caution sign error in Final Cut Pro 10, and this is why, because if you select leave files in place and the clips on your hard drive are moved, you're gonna get that error. So. If you move your clips or your folders or files on your Mac a lot, have this enabled copy to the library. But in this case, I don't really do that. So I'm just gonna do leave files in place. Keywords, this will probably be checked. Uncheck those unless you want that. That's just an extra thing that Final Cut Pro 10 has to work for. And we're gonna go down, analyze video. It's gonna probably be like this, have that unchecked. Unless you need it, I don't need it. So uncheck that. Now this is where the most important part comes in here and that's actually creating proxy media. So we have transcode, so we can do neither, and just import it how it is. However, if you have probably just installed Final Cut, you're gonna have all those settings checked, 
uncheck them unless you need them. But right here we have create optimized media. It will use the, the, the footage, but it will kind of make it a little bit smaller in size and copy the clip. So we don't want that. We got what we will actually want, unless you want to edit directly using that HD clip, we can, but I don't think we really need that for now. For the purpose of this, we're going to click on create proxy media just because we want to make Final Cut Pro 10 run faster. So we're going to hit that. And codec, you can do ProRes Proxy, or you can do H.264. So if you hover over either of these two, you're gonna have ProRes Proxy. This just creates the same ProRes. It's a little bit higher in resolution. If you do H.264, this will create more standard definition video. Frame size is how much of that resolution here, the native resolution, which is 4K, it's going to use. So if we do same as source, we're gonna be using 4K, but if we do 50%, uh, we're gonna be editing in 2K. If you think that's still too much, you can do 25%. So 25 or 50 is good. I'm gonna do 50% and um, everything is good and click import selected. So once your clips are imported, it's going to look just like this. That's the one way, of course, of creating proxy media. So another way of creating proxy media is by changing the way that you import your clips. So you can select it again, except if we go on to the right, we're gonna choose create optimized media instead of create proxy media. So if we create it this way and you somehow forget when you import your video, so we click import selected, it's going to just play back using the optimized media and not proxy. So if you go into the view here and we change that, which is also going to be our fourth tip here, and we go to view and we go down to where it says quality, we can change that to better quality or better performance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import all of these video clips into the timeline. And you're gonna notice you're gonna see a little like dots in the timeline, which means this has to render out in the background, which can also take some time. So once we start adding some stuff here in the timeline by doing something like this, maybe doing that one there, dragging this one over here, and now you're gonna see that it's starting to slow down quite a bit and you have this huge line that it still has to render. If I push play, it's, you can see we have the beach ball, which is really slow. You can see it's skipping a ton of frames. So that's because we're, we haven't even created proxy media. Now you can do this by selecting all of your clips or just one of them. And we're gonna right click and go into transcode media, which will also allow us to actually create proxy media. So you can do create proxy media. We're gonna do H.264. The frame size, we can do 50%, which we'll edit in 2K or you can do 25. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at 50%. I'm gonna click on OK. Now you're gonna notice that in the background, if we click this button here, you're gonna see it's also rendering and it's also transcoding the video. So what we can do is we can stop these if you want one of them to run first. All you gotta do is click the X here and now this will um, apply first here and it will transcode it for you. Notice though that if we go to view and we change the uh, quality to proxy, we have optimized, which is okay, which, which is what we have now, but it hasn't rendered out fully. We have proxy preferred and, and we have proxy only. If we do proxy only, you're gonna notice that all the clips now are red and it says missing proxy. The reason that that is doing that is because we haven't actually rendered out the video here to create a proxy clip. So you're gonna have that red error. So what you have to do first is just wait until this is transcoded. And you can see that the first one already finished and it's already rendering here. If I push play, you're gonna see that it's slow, you know, slowly chugging along, but we're actually playing it through and we're not really getting that beach ball like we did before. However, these are still rendering out. And again, we can click back on this. We can turn off the rendering and you're gonna notice that now we have proxy. And you can see the complete difference between a proxy clip and one that is still rendering out with this here. So if I push play, this is proxy media here. You're gonna notice the, the huge, huge difference here. Let's say that we have this clip here, but we don't wanna drag this whole entire clip here. What you can do to speed up the way you add videos to your timeline, which is also going to be the fifth tip here, instead of having to drag it out here and then having to do your cut like here and here, and you have to delete this, delete that. And all you gotta do is literally go to where, hover over where you want it to start. So let's say we want it to start here, press I, which is where it's going to begin and where you want it to finish, which is maybe here, press O, click and drag and you're done. The sixth tip on actually making Final Cut Pro 10 run faster is just by deleting files again on your computer uh, and closing other apps as well. So if you have any other apps running, and you can tell if 
uh, you know, if Final Cut Pro 10 or any other app is using too much memory, you can press Command Space on your keyboard and type in Activity Monitor, press Enter. And this app will show you what is using the most memory on your MacBook. So you can see that I actually have Adobe Illustrator open in the background. It's using almost one and a half gigs of memory. And you're gonna see that we're almost using all of our 16 gigabytes of physical memory. You close any of those apps, like this one's using 400 megabytes, which is just the um, music app. So you can just quit that by pressing stop and click quit. Adobe Illustrator, we can go ahead and quit that. And music, we can also quit that one as well. Quit on that. And we're gonna you know leave everything how it is. Google Chrome is fine. We saved almost half of the 16 gigs just by closing those two apps. So this is the proxy once it's rendered out and push play. It's still chugging along, but of course it's a pretty heavy uh, plugin. This one here of course is proxy. This one's also proxy media. And then my seventh tip really is just edit directly on the MacBook or on your Mac. That will definitely speed up things because it doesn't have to use the external SSD and having, you know, have it to go into your Mac and Final Cut Pro 10 has to read that from the drive. Whereas if you edit directly on the MacBook, assuming you have the space to do so, then Final Cut Pro 10 will run much quicker because it doesn't have to do the extra time, you know, read those files and write on them as well, which can take even more time. So again, this is in 4K in ProRes. So, you know, just being able to play back video just like this is pretty, pretty darn impressive for a computer that is roughly four years old, five years old. Um, now in 1080p, this will be buttery smooth, of course. If you guys found this video helpful at all, please leave a like and be sure to turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on a video like this. And I'll catch you on my next video. Peace out.